In this video, we're going to take a look at creating something in the part workbench and then modifying it in the part design workbench. Uh, something that some people have asked about. But before that, I'm going to talk a little bit about parts and bodies because some other people have asked about that too. I just want to make clear my understanding of the difference. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file. It's unnamed until we save it. So we're going to save it now. We'll save it as, and we're going to call this part to part design public. I've created a new channel for home loans. My day job is I'm a home loan advisor and I wanted to simply share information about how you calculate your maximum mortgage, how you calculate your mortgage payments using the same kind of techniques I use in this channel to be able to help people to understand all the information about their home loan and all the things about pre-qualification and getting the home of your dreams. If you're interested, please take a look at the channel. Consider subscribing. I'm trying to grow that channel so that I can help people with their mortgages uh, just as much as I help people with free cat. Thanks. And we'll save that. Now, an important um, distinction between a part and a body. Some assemblies require parts to be able to assemble the pieces of your model. So I look at the part as being that's the thing that I actually want to end up with as my uh, component part of an assembly. The body, on the other hand, is the piece that I use to come up with the parts. I'm going to use bodies to create parts. And bodies are also very important when it comes to Boolean operations. So you want to be able to create a body uh, to use in a Boolean operation. So. In this design, we've created just a part, and I'm going to go over to the part workbench. Now, one of the advantages of the part workbench are these primitives, and particularly this guy here, which is um, the creation of parameterized geometric primitives. It allows you to do any of these primitives and some others uh, all from one menu, which is pretty cool. When you do that, you can create here, you can see a plane, a box, a cylinder, a cone, a sphere, ellipsoid, whatever you want to create. So I'm just going to create a simple box. I'm going to create it 10 by 10 by 10. And I'm going to have it on the 0, 0, 0 position. And I'm going to have my rotational axis is Z. And I'm going to have an angle of 0. So when I hit create, we're going to have a cube. And then if I want to create a cone, I can do the same thing. My radius, that's the tip radius of the cone. So I'm going to make that one so it's a little more pointy. I'll leave this at four. The height can be 10. That's fine. It's a 360, so I want a full cone. And then my position, I am going to position it. Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to position it up eight millimeters. I'm just going to create it now and I'll show you something else about these primitives. So I'll create it. Of course, it's not exactly where I want it to be. So what we can do is we can go to the cone, right click and say transform. And the transform gives us this uh, funky looking LCS. And from that, I can select a ball to rotate. So I can rotate that thing the whole way around. And if you look here, my rotation increment is 15 degrees. I can change that if I want. And my translation increment is one millimeter. So when I move, I move in one millimeter steps. So I can move up, 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 up. And then I'm going to look from the top. And I'm just going to move this over this way and move this over this way and just bring it to roughly where I want it to be. And then if I look here, I'm going to say, okay. And I have my box on my cone and 
that is my primitive shape that I want to start with. And now I'm going to say, take this cone and this box. So I'm pressing the shift key when I select the box. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a union of those two. So now this fusion that it shows here is actually all one piece. Now, what if I want to modify this piece in part design? Well, I'll go over to the part design workbench. And the first thing that you can see is there's no body. I don't have a body that I'm working in, so there's no active body. And you know in part design, we require an active body. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the fusion, and then we're going to say create a body. And what happened there was it created the body, but it also made a base feature out of that fusion. And that's important that we do it that way because that means we can now work on this body. And if I wanted to, say, put a hole through this body, I can now create a sketch. I'm in the active body that I just created. So I create a sketch. I can look at the sketch plane. It's going to be this plane, so the X, Y plane. Say OK. And I'm going to use my um, sectional view so that I can see where I'm drawing this. And I'm just going to draw a circle right there. And of course, I can I can constrain that circle so I can go here to here with a dimension, call that five, because I want that to be in the middle. Remember, that's a 10 by 10 box. And I'm going to do the same this way. And I'm going to call that five. So now I know my circle is in the middle. And I'm going to give this a diameter constraint. I'm going to call it one millimeter. And then I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to say pocket that. I'm going to say through all. And I'm going to say reversed. And say OK. And if I zoom in there, you can see I just created a hole all the way through. If I flip that up the other way, you'll see the hole is all the way through my model that was created in the part workbench and I can carry on and just and create another sketch just for grins and giggles we'll do this one I'll just create a square hole there and I'm not going to constrain this one just for time saving let's say through all and there you can see I've got a hole that goes all the way through it you can also do things like add in chamfers. All of that works on this base feature model that I have. If I say, OK, I added a face there. I didn't mean to add that face. So I'm going to remove that face and say, OK. It looks like I didn't get this one edge. So and a chamfer to that edge. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go back into this chamfer. I'll just add that edge there. Say OK. And there you go. So now you can see I can add chamfers, radii. Uh, I can I can do um, create a sketch and do regular modeling operations in the part design workbench. So one question you may have is what happens if we go back into part and affect a change on our primitives? So let's try that. Let's go back into part. And now our primitives are over here in this fusion part. So there's the primitives, the cone and the box. So if I open the box, and I change this to, let's say, 15. We'll change this to 11, change this to 12. And we'll just say OK. 
and there you can see it has affected the pot it has affected the boolean and now my body has been affected by the primitive so that still works you can still change the primitive back in part and they work quite well together obviously uh, you got to follow the technique that I showed you make sure that you have them assembled in the right way in terms of the model tree otherwise you may find that your model breaks so just wanted to confirm that you can make changes to the primitive after you've used it in part design to create your final model so hopefully that's helpful to some people um, I didn't know until recently the correct order of things to make that work I can tell you if you try and do it without creating the body and bringing in the base feature your operations will fail so you can't create um, sketches and and uh, do modeling operations unless you're inside a body and you can't do it on the pure part fusion result so you have to have that you have to create that base feature which is created for you so any questions comments please leave them below if you've enjoyed the video please consider subscribing I uh, appreciate that also you can become a member of the channel if you hit the join button below or you can visit us on patreon and join there we have an active community on patreon and i share videos that are not public uh, patreon exclusives or member exclusives if you're a member of the channel you'll see the same videos and uh, i appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.